Finally, my colony has its throne room built. Oh god, no mecha noise, please no. <laughs> this royalty expansion does add quite a bunch of stuff. Yet honestly, I'm not sure if it was worth the extra money I spent on the game. So I shall explain to you what RimWorld royalty adds. I can't really say for sure if it's worth it or not, as it is your decision in the end. But I can provide information for all of you who are hesitating to get the expansion or not. Coming in with the courtly flair and futuristic gear in this expansion. Okay, so before you ask, do I really want to have posh nobles with high demands? Here are a few benefits one can reap from pleasing the royals. Exhausting as that may be. Satisfy their demands and they may deem you worthy of high-tech troops and gear, including, but not limited to, techno-psychic warriors and plasma swords. And they also added one of the most ferocious creatures for everyone, not just those with royalty DLC. Peace. Peace was never an option. Back to the topic at throne here, the royalty expansion adds the Empire! That's all over the place in space. A load of hoity-toity royals with expensive tastes, courtly traditions, and some epic new weapons. Royalty also allows colonists to gain unique titles from the empires. Here's a list of obtainable titles. Freeholder, U-Man, Acolyte, Knight, Praetor, Baron, Count, and here are AI titles. Remember to subscribe and like for more content. Yeet, those are unobtainable. Duke, Consul, Stellark, and lastly, the Emperor. Now, what impact do those titles have, you may ask? Starting from Acolyte, the colonists with the title will start having demands, such as certain clothes, an improved bedroom, and a throne room. The better the title, the bigger the demands. Now let's speak about conceited pawns, aka pawns with the greedy, jealous, abrasive traits. If a pawn with one of those traits becomes entitled, they will start going carrot. Now I'm not joking here. As they rise up in the ranks, they will outright refuse to do stuff around the colony. From cleaning, to hauling, to farming and mining, and then suddenly they refuse to do everything. But the most basic acts such as firefight and the job type basic. However, it's good to note if a pawn without one of those traits becomes entitled, even if they reach the count countess title, they will still do whatever you command them to. What about ascetic though? Ascetics are probably the best pawns to have entitled. Their trait overrides the unique food and bedroom requirements completely. They will still prefer an awful bedroom and simple meals. Note that some of the throne room requirements are also null. Ascetic pawns do not need instruments, or drapes, etc. in their throne room, but do keep in mind they still want a throne room to satisfy their need for authority. RESPECT MY AUTHORITY! Now those titles don't just demand and demand without any rewards. The Empire promised, and it shall deliver. From the title of Acolyte and above, you are able to gain permits, and they get better the higher title you are. Do note some ranks have more than one permit. You can choose which permit comes with your title. Starting off with Acolyte. The first permit is called Laborer Team. You are able to call eight laborers to assist you for four days. These fellows can only do general labor tasks. You are able to control them as if they were your very own pawns. Just remember, you are required to keep them safe. It has a 60 day cooldown and costs four honor if used during cooldown. Honor will be explained soon. There is a smaller version of this, called Call Labor Again, which is only four laborers, works on the same concept, only basic tasks, are there for four days, and you have to keep them safe. They also have a 60 day cooldown, and cost eight honor if used during cooldown. Do note, you need to have the permit, Call Laborer Team, before being able to choose this permit. Lastly, for Acolyte, you are able to call a trooper squad, which calls four light troopers to aid you in battle. These troopers come armed with flak gear, an assault rifle, or an LMG, maybe even a chain shotgun, and with an implemented death acidifier with a cooldown of 40 days and cost 4 honor if used during cooldown. If you don't know what that is, it is an implant, that if the pawn with the implant dies, all of their equipment will be destroyed, disabling enemies and you from attaining it. But don't let that deter you. If you can down them, there will be nothing stopping you from stripping them of the valuables you so much desire. Moving on to Praetor. 
you get to choose the permits called Transport Shuttle and called Janissary Squad. Starting with being able to call a Transport Shuttle. You are able to call a shuttle for yourself. It will transport any colonists, items, or animals anywhere you desire within 70 world tiles. Makes for very fast journey with the cooldown of 40 days and costs 8 honor if used during cooldown. Call Janissary Squad. Call a squad consisting of four Janissaries to aid you in your battle. Janissaries are empire troops, usually armed with one of many weapons. Some consist of an LMG, charge rifle, assault rifle, and more. They also come with recon gear and an implanted death acidifier. And from the Praetor, Knight come with the permits of calling orbital strikes. <laughs> These have two versions. The primary one is just calling down a single orbital strike, which requires the Knight Dame title, which as the name suggests, calls down a single orbital strike at a targeted position. Good against siege mortars and such. Has a 45 day cooldown and a cost of 8 honor if used during cooldown. The second version is Orbital Salvo, which requires the aforementioned call orbital strike. This one fires an extended barrage of orbital strikes against the target position. Makes for one hell of a tribal raid wipe. Has the same cooldown and honor cost of call orbital strike. And now for the final permit. Only obtainable by Count and Countesses. The calling of the Cataphract Squad. Essentially, these are the game's space marines calling a squad of four heavy cataphract armored pawns to aid you in battle. Now, these are very special units. These are the elite units of the Empire. They come bearing the strongest vanilla armor, the Cataphract armor, from the expansion. Hence their name Cataphract. They can come with a one of three weapons, a charge rifle, charge lance, or minigun. They also come with an implemented death acidifier and armor skin gland. Truly a frightening unit, and you get four of these to help you. And that is the power of permits, yet we still have some more bits of information to cover. Honor. Like Honor, the way to obtain all these sweet perks and titles are through Honor. The way of getting Honor is simple. Just do stuff the Empire requests of you. Upon gaining enough honor, you will be offered a quest to accept a bestowing ceremony. Upon accepting this quest and performing the ceremony, your pawn will gain a title. And another special thing, levels of Psylink. That's right, you can have Psycaths. Titles give rights for psychic amplifiers that allow pawns to become Psycaths, which are pawns with psychic powers. They can pacify enemies and defeat them, blind them, bend them to your will. You can even block pain sensation. High level psychasts are even able to teleport enemies, objects, people. You can even drive animals insane. Even making your allies invisible is possible and much more. Also, I've just been informed they can cause mass vomiting. Beware. Even psychasts have limits. Using psychic abilities generates psychic entropy, which is a negative effect of psychasting. However, this is affected by modifiers such as psychic sensitivity and psychic equipment. It is possible to have strong psychers using those, and it is possible to remove the limiter. However, straining a pawn beyond their limits can result in permanent damage. If you don't want to serve the Empire, there are other ways of attaining these amplifiers. Stealing being one of them, however, this will make you an enemy of the Empire. In addition, there are also decrees. Hear ye, hear ye, by royal decree, King Nubut the Third has demanded you to subscribe and like this video. Those are quests with no rewards. Neglecting these increasingly gives a negative mood debuff. But completing them gives a positive plus six mood buff. However, decrees can be ended earlier. If the pawn who issued the decree dies, gets kidnapped, or the title is renounced, the decree ends. Speaking of renouncing, heirs are automatically assigned when a title is obtained. Should a noble die and be resurrected, the heir keeps the title, but you can renounce it to the original noble. To sum it all up, do stuff the Empire wants and get awesome rewards. But what is it the Empire wants you to do? You see, the Empire can ask you to do many things. At first they seem rude, and will ask you to do stupid stuff like protect terriers for a while. That for some god awful reason, mechanoids want you dead. Mechanoids, that's right, 
The Empire is in an everlasting battle against the Mechanoids, and the Mechanoids won't wait for you anymore. The Mechanoids will drop down from orbit, creating awful things called Mechanoid Clusters. They are done waiting for you to awaken them. Now they set up bases and camps around the world with villainous goals in mind. In fact, just recently the Emperor has sent me a message. A new type of Mechanoid was spotted. Pikemen. After close observation, these appear to be sniper walkers. The safest place to be with them around is quite literally on them. They are fragile and weak to melee attacks, so take advantage of that. However, those mech clusters will do anything to annoy you as much as they can. They poison the air or darken the sky, making confrontation unavoidable. Understandably, the Empire wants your help dealing with them. Of course, this is not the only thing they want. They'll also want you to host royals as well, but it's not all bad. Somewhere along the way, the Empire will ask you to construct something. Usually these take a few days to weeks to complete. You may also need to defend them from time to time. There's also site quests, which open nearby points of interest to explore. Weaponry! Starting off with plasma swords. These are special swords made with a metallic core and a cutting edge. But that's not all. Some weapons have special connections. This one is a normal plasma blade, but some have a persona variant. On a side note, you would do well to remember any linked weapon will be far more powerful than its normal counterpart. If the wielder of a linked weapon dies, the weapon cannot be wielded by anyone anymore. This will provide you a fair bit of motivation to revive whoever used it. Not to mention these weapons come with special traits, such as Kill Happy, which grants a mood buff per kill, or Free Wielder, that allows anyone to wield it. There's also Zeus Hammers, which are hammers with embedded EMP capacitors. Super effective against mechanoids as it releases a blast of EMP upon impact. Mono Sword, another blade, but this one does a lot of damage. One of the highest armor penetrating value for melee weapons in the game. It's a blade, not meant for striking, but for lopping off limbs with ease. This one can have a linked variant, which is not quite like a persona as these do not have traits, but they do grant bonuses to the chosen wielding pawn. There's also a few new implants in the expansion. Death Acidifier is one of them. But let's talk about one peculiar implant called the Drill Arm. And it is exactly what you think it is. Also, who needs an arm when you can have a drill? Increase mining speed by 160%. Thank you all for watching this video. We hope that we gave you enough information on the DLC for you to decide if it's worth your money or not. Remember to sub, like, and comment down below what you think of the video. Look, here's another video. And another! Click on them. Give us your soul.